Hey y'all, this video is going to be a little bit long, but stick with me. I just want to give you a quick Bible story, my point of view, and just pray for you and your upcoming week. All right, go ahead and check the next clip. And I'm cooking right now, so I'm just going to go ahead and talk to you real quick. Uh, I went to church today, as I usually do on Sundays. The preacher of the hour spoke on the story of Jonah. If you heard the story of Jonah enough, we kind of painted him as kind of bad guy. He was a prophet who God told to go to Nineveh, tell the people of Nineveh to repent, and Jonah did not want to go. Jonah just knew that they were a stubborn people. He didn't believe that they deserved the forgiveness. He just didn't want to waste his time going down there to tell them, hey, God said do this, and they weren't going to listen. So Jonah really tried his best to not do what God said to do because he assumed the people was going to take it in another way. And, you know, now that I'm getting older and now that I've been called into ministry, um... I can kind of understand where Jonah was at. I can kind of understand it. Um, because if any of you are hit to the ministry game, if you're hit to how you, how you know people normally operate, when you try delivering a word to a group of people who you know ain't really trying to hear that, it could be people in your family. It could be people you go to work with. It could be your friends. It could be it could be anybody. It could be your mama, your daddy. It could be your brother, your sister. And like when you just know a certain group of people ain't really rocking with God, they're not trying to hear that gospel message. You they like you can do you, but let me do me. So when, when you feel like God has given you a word for the people and you feel like it's going to be a waste of breath, I can kind of see where Jonah was coming from. Um, but I also know that when God, give, when God gives you a burning desire, when God really, let me put it this way, when God really places something on you, for you to do and you can't shake it you gotta do it like Jonah, Jonah so much did not want to go to Nivea that he tried running he got on a boat and tried getting far away from Nineveh as possible so much so Jonah was on this boat thinking if he got away from Nineveh the far, farther away he got from Nineveh that he was gonna be okay <laughs> But he got on a ship, fell asleep at the bottom of the ship. A storm came and storm was about to turn the whole boat over. It was other people on this boat. And because of Jonah's disobedience, this boat was about to kill everybody for his disobedience. Sometimes we gotta be careful that our disobedience isn't affecting other people. So they like, well, people that was on top was like, well, you calling your God. Well, you call on your God. You call on your God. They they was casting lots. Like they were they were throwing things over and casting lots, calling on their various gods. But the true and living God was the one who they should have been calling on, but they didn't know no better. And when they realized they had to throw Jonah overboard, they got they got past that storm when Jonah was thrown overboard. Is it sometimes we put ourselves in situations and we're cast out of stuff because we really ain't supposed to be there in the first place. We, we run in and we shouldn't and we cause some disruption in other people's lives because of our disobedience, right? Jonah got thrown over the shit. And guess what? A whale. The Bible says God prepared a whale to swallow up Jonah. And I know some people think uh, the story of Jonah is uh, fake. 
or just illustrative is not literal i believe jonah was really swallowed up by a whale just as much as i believe jesus died and arose on the third day just how i believe he went into hell and got the authority back from satan I, I, I believe all the Bible. I don't believe the miracle of Jesus' birth and the miracle of his death and resurrection. I can sure enough believe that God pre prepared a whale to swallow Jonah. So we don't know exactly what kind of whale it is. I'm a history buff. I'm a, I, I like science and I like animal planet. And there are some big whales out there that if you research like a, what's it called? A blue whale, I believe. That looked like that could have kind of been the whale that swallowed Jonah. It got the spout on his head. And that could have been the one that released him. I don't know. But it did say God prepared a great fish, a big fish, to swallow up Jonah. So eventually, Jonah stayed in that in the belly of the whale for three days and three nights. And um, the Lord released the whale to release Jonah. God... When God got something for you to do, and if it don't kill you, you got to surrender. If, if you can make it through the storm and make it through the fish and make it through hell and, and make it through all this running, you, you got to. You just got to. If, if you still alive after all that, you just got to, right? So Jonah finally goes to Nineveh, dragging his feet. Lord, my mom ain't gonna listen. Lord, my daddy ain't gonna listen. Lord, these kids ain't gonna listen. Lord, my cousin ain't gonna listen. Lord, this neighborhood not gonna listen. Lord, these friends I used to hang out with ain't gonna listen. Lord, this community not gonna listen. God said, listen, this ain't you, it's me. It's not your word, it's my word. You're, I'm sending you, I'm, I'm gonna give you what to say. Amen? So, Jonah went, and guess what, y'all? The people repented. God had Jonah do all that because God knew their hearts were ready. I'm going to let that sink in for a second. Because just when we think we know somebody, when we know people, even if you did witness to them before, even if you did try talking to them before, when God says go, you might have to go again. If God says that... I, as he says, one man plants, another man waters, but God sends the increase. God might have sent you the first time to water the situation. He might have you go a second time to sow into it. God is going to send an increase. So we can't assume who isn't going to accept the word of God, even if it didn't work out before. So after all that running Jonah did, sleeping in the in a belly of a whale for three days, because he just knew these people was not going to listen. But why would God have them go all the way and they don't listen? God going to have you survive that whole situation, that whole sleeping in a, a whale of a belly, sleeping in a belly of a whale, and something not happen when you get there? You think God going to have us go through all we going through and something not happen when we get there? My, 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 I don't know who I'm talking to right now, but you got to go. You got to go. I've been placed in many of situations where I'm like, mm, God, send somebody else. Nah, I'm good. Send somebody else. And as I'm saying, send somebody else. I find myself moving closer and closer toward the situation, fighting and screaming and kicking and yelling because I really don't want to go. But while I'm saying, but while I'm saying, send somebody else, I still see he's sending me. Even if, even if I'm being sent through my storm, if I'm being sent through the valley experience or the mountaintop experience, even though I might be, God might be sending me when it's very uncomfortable for me and through my disobedience or when I'm obeying and being faithful to him, he's still sending me. 
I'm still I'm still going through it, whether it be through the storm, through the fire, through the breeze in my hair, through a ha through a, while I'm smiling, while I'm crying, when I want to go, when I don't want to go. For some reason, I still feel like I ended up where I was trying not to end up. How did I get here, Lord? How did I get here? I thought I thought I was going that way, and I I still end up in Nivea. So I don't know what your Nivea experience is. I don't know what God is calling you to possibly do or where to go to possibly speak a word, where to go and leave encouragement, where to go and to pray. You might you might own a business and God might be telling you to start talking to people about God in your business. Just start ministering just a little bit. Just start telling God and just speaking about God just a little bit in your business, in your community, at the gym, at the hair salon. Why are you getting your nails done? Why, why are you getting your tire changed? I don't know where your Nineveh is, but if you feel the Holy Spirit really prompting you, you gotta go. Haven't we been swallowed up by too many fish in our lives? I don't. I don't like unnecessary drama. I don't like unnecessary storms. I, I don't. I don't like uh, walking in circles. I don't like repeating myself. I don't like feeling like I'm on a hamster wheel. I, I don't like that feeling. I don't like. I don't. I don't subscribe to unnecessary drama and trauma. So when I feel myself on a hamster wheel, when I feel like I keep going through the same storm or going through the same battle or the same situation, same headache, I'm like, okay, God, is this me or is this you? Did you assign this to me right now because you trying to show me something for me to get out my own ways to follow you? Or is this, or is this me? Is this me or is this you? <laughs> is this me or is this you? What's going on? So I just wanted to leave that uh, with you today and for you to go and meditate and read and study the book of Jonah and and, and see how you, what, what are your similarities with Jonah? What are your differences, differences uh, to Jonah? And do you feel like you are called to your Nineveh to speak God's word and God's message and to encourage the people even though you really don't want to. And maybe you're feeling like you are in a hamster wheel going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. You try, you you stay try running from God and you still end up back at square one. If we, I'm saying we, if we would just obey the first time it won't be such a headache. If we would obey the first time, it w we wouldn't be so stressed out. If we, would c if we could just surrender and obey, we won't have to keep running. It wouldn't be as hard. We w if we're making it run. Jonah made it harder for himself the more he ran. Ain't, there ain't no amount of liquor, ain't no amount of drugs, weed, sex, trips, hair salons, nail visits, pedicures, praise, worship, singing, fasting, or giving that you can do if you're not going to obey. The Bible also says obedience is better than sacrifice. You can't buy your way out of this. You can't give your way out of this. If you sold your home right now and gave the clothes off your back to the next homeless person you see, that wouldn't mean a hill of bean if you're not going to obey God. If you're trying to, I'm saying you, but I really mean we, if we stay trying to prove God wrong and run from God and tell him what we're not going to do, a lot of us are making it harder for ourselves. And we're not at peace. We're not at peace. I'm not saying you don't love God. I'm not saying you don't trust God. But when we keep going around, around, and around, and around. And not obeying the first thing he told us. We're making it harder for ourselves. So I encourage you to really sit down and ask yourself. Am I running and what am I running from? 
God, what are you really telling me to do? And God, if this is really you, help me just to do it. And for you, and for you to get the glory. Help me, Lord. I don't, I don't want to keep running. I don't want to keep being swallowed up. I don't want to keep being in situations that's literally causing me to panic, literally causing me to stress, literally causing me to worry. So God, what are you, what are you telling me to do? And help me to do it. Help me to obey. I want to love you as much as I say I do. I want to show you I love you as much as I say I do. Help me to show you how much I love you as much as I say I do. All right, y'all. God bless your people. Bless us, your people. We, your people. Help us to learn through the life of Jonah that is not fun to run when we're being called to do something. So wh wherever we are in the world, listening to this message, wherever we are in the world, whatever situation that we're in, whatever you assign for us to do, just help us to do it. If we gotta do it alone, if we gotta do it afraid, if we gotta do it kicking, screaming, crying, Help us to obey. Help us to show you how much we love you as much as we say it. Bless us in this upcoming week. You get the glory. You be pleased with our life. You be pleased with our service. You be pleased with our worship. You be pleased with our obedience and sacrifice. Forgive us from all of our sins. Anything that we did, said, or thought that was not pleasing, forgive us. Anything we should have done, should have said, should have thought that we didn't, forgive us. Make us better. Make us anew. Heal the sick, the afflicted. Bless the lonely and brokenhearted. Help someone come asking, what must I do to be saved? What must I do to enter into the kingdom of heaven? What must I do to know Jesus? We appreciate you, oh God. Thank you for your miracle, wondrous power. And thank you for showing up and showing out in our lives. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. And amen.